It's super simple and very effective. And if you want to see how the whole thing comes together, then check out the rest of this video. Yeah. So to make the bench, I'm going to break it down into three sections. Section one is the two A-frames. Section two is the support pieces that span the distance between the two A-frames and the two 45 degree angle pieces. And then obviously section three is going to be the top of the bench. It's all going to be made out of the same material, one and a quarter inches in thickness. And most of the A-frame and all of the support pieces are two and a half inches wide. And obviously the top is a lot wider, but we'll get into that later on. So for the material, I picked up this six quarter inch and a half thick white oak. And it's the same material that I used to build the bed that we just made. And obviously the bench is going at the end of the bed, so I want it to match. And as you can see, this material is pretty rough. It's oversized. So on my miter saw, I broke a couple lengths down into pieces that are just bigger than the components of the A-frame and the stretches. I then ran the pieces through my jointer to get them nice and flat and a nice square edge on one side. And then ran them through the planer to get them just over an inch and a quarter in thickness. And then on my table saw, cut them to just over two and a half inches in width. So now I've got a bunch of pieces milled up to the right thickness and the right width. I can now put the stretcher and these angle pieces aside and make a start on the parts for the A-frame. So there's one part in the A-frame that's different to the rest and that's this lower horizontal brace. And that's because it's double the thickness. And the reason for that is so it can pick up the horizontal stretcher that spans the two A-frames as well as being flush with the actual A-frame itself. And it's gonna make more sense as we kind of go along here. So I grabbed two pieces that are book match and glued and clamped them together and let it dry. And then in the meantime, while that's drying, we can make a start on cutting the other pieces of the A-frame to size. So I've gone ahead and marked and cut the top section to length on my table saw. And next, I wanna cut the two verticals but they're a little bit more difficult than the top because they're on a bit of an angle. So for the two pieces to be on a bit of an angle and sit nice with the rest of the frame, I figured out that I need to cut the top of this at an 82 degree angle. So that's what I did. On my table saw, I set my blade up to 82 degrees, and then on my crosscut sled, I removed the top of each piece to that angle. So with the legs sitting at an angle, for it to sit nice on the ground, I also have to cut the same 82 degree angle at the bottom. So that's what I did. I marked the length up to which I want the legs to be. And then again, on my table saw, I cut the angle at the bottom of the leg. So now most of the parts of the A-frame is cut, I can now start dry assembling them together. And because I wanted to make this bench as simple as possible for me, for the most part of the joinery, I'm gonna be using my domino. And I know not everyone has a domino cutter, so glue and screws and plugs will be just as effective. So I made a mark inch and three quarters in from either side on the underside of the top piece. And then using my domino, I cut dominoes into the top of the legs on the underside of the top section to join the two together. Okay, so now I can put these aside for a little bit. And now these are dry, I can take them out of the clamps and then put them back through the jointer to get two nice square edges. And then I can cut them down on the table saw to two and a half inches by two and a half inches square. So now these are all milled up, double the thickness of the material using the frame here. I can now cut them to length to fit inside horizontally. And to do that, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a little bit of a cheat. So as this is made up, I made a mark two inches up from the bottom on both of the verticals. And that's where I want the underside of this brace to sit. So I'm just gonna rest the brace on top and line it up with the two marks that I made. So in theory, if I cut this at those marks, it should all go together nice and tight. And that couldn't have turned out any better. So now all I gotta do is domino it into place. And then I can have a look at making the stretches. So the stretches themselves are pretty straightforward. As we've already milled them up to the right width and the right thickness, all I really have to do is cut them down to length on my table saw. And then to connect the stretcher to the A-frames, again, I'm just gonna use dominoes, but the top and bottom are joined slightly differently. 
So the top stretcher gets installed flat. So I've basically just made a mark center of the top section of the A-frame and center of the stretcher, and then domino the two together on those center marks. Yet the bottom stretcher gets installed vertically. And I installed it pretty much the same way. I made a center mark of the lower stretcher, a center mark on the stretcher spanning the two, and then on those center marks, and then dominoed the two together. So now all that's done, the base is pretty much built up other than the two 45 degree braces that go in between the two stretchers. So on my miter saw, I put a 45 degree cut on the end of two of the pieces that we milled up earlier. And then flip the bench upside down and then mark three inches either side of the A-frames. And that's where we want the braces to start. And then with the help of the bench itself, I marked the opposite side and then cut that on my miter saw. Now all I have to do is domino it to the bottom stretcher and then screw it to the top. With all that done, we have a real simple but nice looking base for a bench. So now all I have to do is take it apart, give it a really good sand and then glue and clamp it together. So meanwhile, while this is drying, I can now put it aside and then make a start on the actual top. So out of my lumber pile, I picked out two pieces of white oak that are best suited for the top of the bench. And as you can see, these are, again, pretty rough, so we need to mill them up. So I'm gonna cut them down to length just over size on my miter saw. And then I'm gonna take them over to the boneyard and get them nice and flat, and then bring them down to just over one and a quarter inches in thickness. And then I put them both through the table saw to bring them down to equal width. And obviously these aren't 15 inches wide, so which is why I gotta join the two together. So next I'm gonna add a series of dominoes to help with alignment and then glue and clamp the two pieces together. And then once dried, I can take it back out of the clamps, clean up any of the residue, and then put it back through my planer, get it down to exactly one and a quarter inches in thickness. I then cut it to its final size on my miter saw. So now I can attach the top to the base. So the way that I'm gonna do that is by using these figure eight connectors. So the way that I'm installing these is getting a fastener bit, the same size of the larger part of the figure eight connector, and then drill a series of holes the same depth as the fastener bit around the top of the bench. And then finally with a sharp chisel, remove the little edges so that once the fastener is screwed down, it can move around with the wood as the wood moves during the different seasons. And then flip the top upside down and then attach the base to the underside of the top through the connectors. So now all I have to do is give the whole thing a good sand and some finish with some Osmo oil. So that I can take it upstairs and see what it looks like in its final position. 